Okay, so here we are. We're down in, guess where I am? Ah, oh, look at that shit. Look at that shit. It's fucking, damn, Supreme Court. So George is over here streaming. Came for an interview, he's streaming. He's gonna stream while we stream. Okay? That's cool, whatever. So we're in DC, that's the, uh, that's the uh, capital across the street. We're gonna go for a walk, because it's very hot out, very sunny, but I wanted to uh, start here at the, uh, Supreme Court, and we're gonna ask George some questions. I wrote a couple. Of, I got a couple of questions on a piece of paper. A couple of questions. Okay, George, you're gonna call. You're gonna cooperate, or you're gonna? I'm gonna cooperate. Okay, let's go. We're we're dueling. <laughs> All, right, All right, go ahead. Let's All just right. go over here. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me let me get you in the frame, George. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I okay. So so I have George Webb, the very okay. difficult videographer, with me that I want to ask him a couple of questions. Now we got it. If you. Yeah, I'll so George this. is going to simultaneously record because because he doesn't trust. He thinks I'm going to edit, right, George? Uh, no, I, I, I think Lift the Veil is going to edit. <laughs> or well, that's going to yeah. But, but they're going to do it anyway. Yeah. Okay, so so I promise not to. What when I when we're done here, I will hit the edit. I will hit the deliver button. Okay. Oh, cool. All right, cool. So we're going to walk. Let's uh let's walk let's walk towards the shade. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. You know you know the area. I just yeah, want to yeah. make. You're about a foot bigger than me, so and I want to... it's better if I'm behind you then, and I'll just reach in front. Yeah. There. There you go. All right, so George, let, let's just stop for one second. George Webb is, why the hell, what the hell am I doing in D.C., right? My plane just flew in. It's in the back, with, right? So, and, you know, why am I here? Why am I here, right? Because to me, George Webb, right, right? I'm going to ask some, some, I got like three or four questions. That's it. I got a little piece of paper. I want to ask George, George, it's George's show for the most part. And I, I was, uh, to about two years ago, like most people, I was inspired by George's work and uh, a number of topics, right? And I think popularity ebbs and flows, and the bigger you get, uh, I think what happens is people start to paint the target on your back. It's called fame, you know? And I think George is, is uh, I, I think he would agree with that assessment. Yes. That he's experiencing some degree of, Very much agree with of that. targeting. Uh, as a, as a result of fame, right? So, where, but what better place to start than you know the the, the uh, Supreme Court of the United States? I just went in there, man. The only thing I noticed was very clean bathrooms. That, that was yeah. that was the first thing you noticed. Is like it's, it's, justice. You think you equate the justice with the cleanliness of the bathroom? Yeah. But I felt mostly empty when I looked at like I, saw, I took a picture of Scalia on the wall, you know. And it was uh. just, I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, so I got a, I got a couple of questions. We're gonna uh, let, that's let, very let, thought provoking right off the start. Yeah. Yeah. Let's walk. So, so the first, I guess the first question, George, when um, when I uh, started following your program yep. on YouTube, I think of. Well, let me also preface this as well. I don't think of George personally. I don't think of George as. When you said meet me at the journalism fucking school, I don't know what that means, right? It's a museum. It's a news museum. It's just an easy. You know. Whatever. But I don't consider myself. Or I don't consider you really what well, what this is journalism. I consider it kind of a uh, kind of a, 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 a above that. I think it's actually a level above that where thank you Good. where where there's no there's no education. It's the school of hard knocks that teaches you, and then when your blood boils so much, like for for example, I know you were Bernie guy. Yes. Right? And you know Bernie Sanders getting his getting a knife in his back. Was enough to, you know, was enough to just like say, okay, I quit. I'm. I, I was at some point. I was leaving the country, but I didn't do that. I stayed, and uh, I think that that's what drives uh, drives uh, people to to do something like this, to devote Are themselves you? to doing it. Right? Yeah, that's enough. Or you want to get the capital in your back? Uh, yeah. Well, let's let's sit for a second. And okay. So. Let me get on the right side because I'm I'm a uh, I'm a right-handed uh, a right-handed dude. All right. So, so I guess the first question I, I was I'm interested in asking is uh, Imran Wan. Let's talk about let's talk about Imran Wan. I, I have three. I'll, I'm not going to hide my question. What I want, I'm going to ask you in, in this order. I want to know about Imran Wan, and I think you you uncovered something that a lot of people don't know about, which is uh, you explained for the most part to the world about. Uh, diplomatic containers yeah and you talked about you you introduced I think most of the country to the, the phrase rat line right like most people don't know what the fuck you're talking about right, right. Uh, so 
I want to I want to talk a little bit about that, and then we'll. I think most people watching want to see this. They want to see me. You. F they want to see me. Me frame you as a murderer uh -huh. of your friend, right? Okay. So yeah. we'll talk about Jenny Moore, maybe a little Seth Rich, okay. and then I want to. I want to go into uh, big picture. I want to. I want to. I want to ask you about uh, some big picture stuff. Okay. So so uh, so Imran Awan, right? Imran Awan. People don't know what Imran Awan is. And then I'll shut up. I'll let George talk because no, it's his interview. Fine. So. Imran Awan is a is two years ago. George Webb said, "If we could get Trump to say Imran Awan, we would win." Right? He said that. I remember that. I remember the video. I remember the video of you saying that. And guess what? Maybe Trump didn't say Imran Awan because Trump likes to give everybody a funny name, but he called him the the Pakistani mystery man. What about the Pakistani mystery man? Right? Now that's not Donald Trump, the guy at the casino owner. That's Donald Trump, the president of the United States. And why? Was it because Senator Grassley said it, Imran Awan? No, because of the, the because once Trump realized that he realized the ramifications of a spy ring in Congress, that through that spy ring, you would have exposed massive corruption, massive quid pro quo. All you had to do was push, and and but there, there was no will to do it. You you also called McCabe. You also called out that these guys would sink McCabe, Comey. You also said Hillary Clinton will go down, but but we'll, we'll, we'll th some people are above the law, right? You know, some people are above the law. So what I wanted I said she would go to the Maldives, but then could keep you going. did. Yes, yeah. yeah, you did. You sat on a you sat on a bench on the uh, West Side Highway, and you, you said that you don't want to see her go to jail. But I I I tend to think that the, the Clintons and and uh, they're 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 one step above the game that the game doesn't apply to them. But we'll we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So. So Imran Awan is is free today. Yes. Uh, well, I, th I think he yeah uh, he uh, got credit for time served, which I think wearing the bracelet they considered time served. Right. So it's been uh, when I filed my first intervener um, over almost a year ago now. Uh, so it's it was July twenty seventh when he was arrested. So he's been wearing the bracelet ever since. Never spent one minute in jail ever nope. so the paul manafort comparison is is strong there you go uh um, the camera yeah it's kind of a dueling camera thing um the uh, so he never served one minute and that is a right. double standard you know right. that's the first thing that trump can point to is hey whatever you think about all these people um imran is way worse which he said finally which is great right. and uh paul manafort went to solitary i think paul manafort still in solitary right now what does that say what does that say to the american people when when there was evidence a mile high of imran awan and uh, when we when we look at the dnc hack the quote hack by the russians right when we look at that it leads back to clearly leads back to debbie wasserman schultz's laptop it leads back to the server in hillary clinton's basement right of which imran awan clearly had access if he had access to Debbie Wasserman Schultz's laptop. He also had access to everything, right? He had it, right. Yeah. So, so what does that say to the American people? Where this, this, this is treason. This is this is insider trading. This is this is money laundering to a Clinton Foundation, and and and, and time served. Takes his million dollars. He goes back to Pakistan with his three wives and smokes some hookah. Yeah, I don't know if he smoked, uh, but we'll we'll get there. Um, yeah, this is kind of fun. This is like uh, watching those funny stereoscope things that you learned in, in grade school to give you a 3D view, you know. Right. Um, yeah, I think Imran is... My angle's better than your angle. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. Well, you, I'm, I'm... Battling... It's, that's it's okay. your interview, so right, I mean, yeah. you're the interviewer. Well, that was my question. I, yeah. I want to know, I want to know where does that... I mean, you also filed a ton of lawsuits. You were you were driving these people crazy here in D.C. filing lawsuits, naming names, and it it it. That's why I wanted to start at the at the Supreme Court because the judicial is broken in this country. Yeah. Right? It, it's failing us, and Jared Jared Beck has said it on and on. Has challenged in in court. Tim Canova down in Florida got a knife in his back with Debbie Wasserman Schultz cheating in, in elections. No consequence. No consequence. Evidence all over the place. Have they had the Florida primary yet? No, it's coming up. It's no, coming up, uh, yeah. oh, no, no. Well, he's the new one. The, where he's running as an independent. He, he's running as an independent. Yeah. November sixth. No, 
No oh, primary. Right. Oh, right. No primary. Okay. Yeah. Because he's an independent. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so what do you, what do you, I mean, I'm asking you big picture questions, George. Well, I know, it's, I know you like details, it, but. Very, very simply, Imran Awan was kind of Rahm Emanuel's right hand man, as far as IT is concerned. Right. And that was also his spy, right? So whoever has worked and have been involved with Rahm since then, Imran has your email. <laughs> Imran has your texts. That's just how ROM works. And if you're going to deal in dark weapons and do that kind of thing, mm -hmm. you are going to do it on a secure network with Blackberries. And Imran's been running that game here for the DNC and the people in the DNC who want to do the dark weapons game or just concealed weapons or whatever, even or just Kalashnikovs or Kalashnikovs, I'm supposed to say, mm -hmm. right? And that's Russian been. guns. Yeah, that's been since 2004. But I had said he had been working for a company called Inter-America since 2000. Right. And Inter-America is this kind of spy, junior spy academy for bringing these kids in to do this kind of stuff. And he started in Florida. What do, you, what, do you think, what do you think about Trump's inability to, to, to talk about? He's president of the United States and he has no influence over his, his uh, Department of Justice. And he can't even get a prosecution on a low-level you know, schmuck. Well, I mean, what does that say? I, that's my point. Is what does it say about our country? What does it say about our judicial that we can't? The the, the can't side fair, that can't does get a fair hearing anymore. the uh, wrist slaps. That's how you know which side DOD is on. The side that gets the guy put into uh, solitary confinement. That's where DOD isn't. Right. At that moment. It makes if you, sense. If of you, course. If you go into these different uh, how, uh, House or Senate. You'll see in the basement is all the different branches of this of the service right. are in there with their uh, liaison folks, right? So, um, so that's my first point is um, you you're going to have a, a heavy military influence, and both sides will be used. Both the Republican side and the Democratic side will be used for spying. Right. And then the only people that have all the information, because there's a secure network on this side. Uh, for the CIA is the CIA. CIA do you, do you, aggregates ask, from me, both sides. Let me ask and that you. really, when, once you ha have that const construct, it. yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you, you, it explains everything. Right. It explains how they knew not to go ahead with the Iran nuclear deal, because right. they're gonna, it's gonna go down in flames. Right. Nobody's gonna vote for Iran. You have a, you have an inside ear into into what's going on inside yeah. that building across the street. Yeah. And that's that's not only inside of trading, but. If you're selling and, and communicating with foreign foreign entities, that's called treason because you're selling state secrets. That's by definition a treasonous act. Right? So that's what that's what that's the ramification in my view of, of Imran Awan. And and then but, I, I well, guess I, well you I, asked about Trump, and so just to finish yeah, that, yeah. Uh, I yeah, was just yeah. trying to lay the foundation of this oh, is sorry. CIA owns this hill right here. That was. But then the second thing is they've been planning for this for a long time. What if a president came in that we didn't know. Hmm. What if George Bush, you're not, you don't have to worry, right? right? Either one. Clinton, you don't have to worry. They really have not had this problem since LBJ, I mean, in Kennedy, right. where there hasn't been a cooperative president. Now, Obama, now people will get mad at me immediately for saying this, had a few moments where he tried to exert a little bit of presidency, and, you know, there were shots went into the White House, right. there were pictures of Kennedy's head being blown off that were shown okay. to him. Uh, but he, he had a few moments where he stopped the bombing uh, in Syria, etc. So, uh, but they've been planning for it, and that's why. I so you're, you're saying what you're saying is those events are connected to the little story that we're talking about, which is infiltrating the way this information leaks out, how it affects the stock markets, how it affects the global banking markets, how it affects America's decisions to go to war, who's going to profit, right? That's the significance of Imran Awan, right? Now, I guess, I guess, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm interested, I'm interested in your, your, your thought. Do you think it's better to? I mean, we, we got nothing, as as Trump said, he got nothing. Well, we got nothing. We got, we got nothing uh, out of that uh, effort other than, you know, the spin machine spinning it. Oh, it's it's nothing. You know, what was it Chris Gallon? No, it's, there's nothing to see here, right? right. Bill Clinton's lawyer. Yeah. Saying he doesn't see it. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Yeah, it was obvious state support, you know, and, and I saw the team of lawyers that came in, and then obviously, you know, uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz as well. When you can 
uh, be caught with a uh, burglary, 20 robbing supposedly 20 different uh, offices right. on the inauguration or sometime around there, leaving for Pakistan, then come back. Clear money trail. Right, then be barred from the network in February. So he, they leave uh, in. They leave uh, him in. Um, after the inauguration, uh, Jan 20. So then they get barred about February 9th, right, somewhere in there. And then they're they're back, right. you know. And he's after he's barred from the network, he's got all these hard drives with Debbie Wasserman Schultz and two IDs in the Rayburn office building. And we also find a backpack at his house with congressional markings. Then we find out he's got all these iPhones that are never supposed to be sent to the individual employee's home, let alone one that supports terrorism, right? A uh, country that supports terrorism in near the uh, Kashmir. So there's there's these backpacks with these congressional markings everywhere we look. As a matter of fact, we might be sitting on one, right. you know, right now. A lot of details to the story. There's so a lot of details to the story, but right, the key so is Trump needs to keep on keep on it on yeah, saying agree. how could this not be a state supported. Uh, right. So let's 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 go let's go uh, let's let's bounce on those subjects. Yeah, so the next subject, one of the things that uh, that I found profound when you, when you uncovered it, or I don't think it was actually something that you uncovered, but you 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 talked about it, and it it it, it uh, kind of like a you know a piece of your brain opens up. You say, oh shit, you're right. All right. So diplomatic containers used to be a diplomatic envelope, where a diplomat would have an envelope, and he can take his very personal and tricky shit, right? And put it in that envelope and there would be no questions asked about an envelope. But then they expanded it, what we found, is it, I, and you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but they expanded it to four containers on a cargo ship, right? Four containers on a cargo ship, no questions asked, going in and out of ports all over the United States. Is it true? Yeah. It's, it's, it's fucking true and nobody, What's in those containers? Yeah. What's in the container? How does 500 pounds of heroin end up in a in a slum, you know, slum apartment in Harlem, or in, in the, or in D.C. downtown D.C.? How does that happen? Yeah. Does it come up? Was it somebody taped it to their body and went through the airport? No. This is. So I guess what what I want to know is, you know, what do you? How do we make that story, you know, resonate with people? How how do we make them realize? Well, realize that they're using our cargo ships. You you might drugs one way, arms the other. Yeah, you might get the long George Webb answers that I'm so famous for the word salad answer. Uh, but the the bottom line is, I learned about this just like you did the diplomatic loophole. Obviously, if I have a secret battle plan with you know between France and and, and, and Britain about attacking Germany on such and such a day, I need to have diplomatic security. Can't have regular port guards looking at that stuff in the pouch. They used to carry these pouches. Pouch. I'm totally supporting diplomatic pouches. Where they went to the unbelievably huge size pouches, it's like, hey, wait a minute. You are you could take half of, uh, you give that to Imran Awan, he could fill that thing with hundreds of hard drives. I mean, I don't know if you've seen yeah. the size of these gigantic pouches. I live, in, I live right by the harbor. I see the boats come in all day long. You can't even count how many, there's you know, hundreds of containers on, uh, per boat. But I, I just mean the, the pouch that they have, it's about the size oh, of, a, it's about the size of Jeff Sessions, <laughs> only it's about as wide as Chris Christie, if that gives you an idea, right? I see. So, that, so that's when it went to, and then it went to this idea, well, the diplomat's gonna wanna send his car over for a two-year assignment. So we should probably make it the whole container because he's gonna throw the car. And, and the send it in, who, who's, who appoints those, uh, who, who gives those? Those uh, the ability to do something like that out. Who, who is the it? the st uh, well, our State Department, State would, Department. Would, would give the credentials, diplomatic uh, passport to let's say you if you're going to let it say uh, Burkina Faso or something, and then Burkina Faso would recognize that. Or if there's a treaty, it's no problem. They just stamp it. If that's if there's some problem, then they wouldn't let you in the country or wouldn't let the con container in the country. But they wouldn't be able to go into the thing. This is the thing right. in South Carolina where I was saying, hey, the, the idea of container also went to, well, if it's a really important ambassador, you know, like one of these uh, oil sheiks from UAE, which is the, the actual ones I believe Imran Awan was using, you can have the four 
uh, right. containers. Now, the, I was getting this information from somebody who was a French diplomat, uh, or and she was married to a diplomat, but she was so. Also so, what would be what would be more effective, closing that loophole or building a ten foot wall uh, at the Mexican border? Oh, uh, there's no question about it. The wall is yesterday's uh, <laughs> solution to tomorrow's problem. It's it's not going to be effective. Now, I think maybe for human trafficking. The wall might make some sense in certain high. They could say how many bodies they could stick people in those containers, right? Yeah. That's true. I, well, there's a way. There's all sorts of different ways. Little toilet of scanning. in the corner. And well, this is this is the point I was trying to make. Pump in a little air. <laughs> well, and you, it sounds funny, but it, it actually has been Bunk used to, to to actually put people through. It's a sad know. idea. It's a sad and, reality. And the, and the code from this, and again, an informant here on Capitol Hill, deep, uh, not deep trade, but deep trade's buddy. I, oh, deep ninety eight point six. The code right. for diplomatic container is 98.6, wow. which is scary. That <laughs> is very scary. But anyway, you can use scanning technologies, and there's all different kinds of rays. You can shoot neutrons through it. You can shoot, you know, X-rays through it. You can do all sorts of things. The thing I was saying was the port of Kasim, mm -hmm. which in Pakistan is where they were actually doing this X-ray testing. There was no testing for this ship coming in to any of the ports. Like Charleston or the other port. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I thought that was that was whatever. That's the the detail. It's the devil's yep. in the details. Whoever whoever notified Coast Guard and Coast Guard took action. You're you're not you're not. If you see something, you say something. And right. That, and that there's no. I'm not here to, to put you on the spot. I watched that episode with you and Jason, and the fucking stream was going crazy, and like all hell broke loose because George was uncovering something about. Diplomatic content. Well, so let's, and, and, let's, and, and, let's, just let's to finish that on. off, right, I, I, I wasn't trying to make an incident out of that. As a right. matter of fact, I left the show, and that's when the tweeting started after I left the show. But one of the important things is uh, I was saying that I took five calls from uh, all the way up the line, from Coast Guard to C uh, Customs and Border Patrol, all the way to DHS, right. which I want to get for my case. That's one of my cases, right? Um, and I want to actually show the phone calls so people can listen to the phone calls. And what I was saying was exactly what we're talking about. Right. There's four containers, UAE passport diplomatic container, check to see, you know, who put that on the ship in, right. in Pakistan. And that, that's all I said. Just use your standard testing. I said standard testing, standard operational testing. They're the ones, DHS was the ones who decided to shut the port down and then make me the victim. Make me the you know the terrorist. Hey, okay. like you say, see something, say something. Okay, right. that's it. I won't go any farther. All right, so let's let's talk about the. There's a. The, I guess this is a sensitive sensitive issue. A lot of people want to hear it, and you know, just for the record, I'm not. I I, I got interested in it because when when because of the the content of what this individual Jenny Moore was researching. Yeah. The ramifications of what she was researching is that. An ex-president of the United States. There is a living witness that the ex-president of the United States states raped this boy as a child, and he was passed around at at uh, events. And true pundit Thomas Paine backed it by saying that the the evidence was credible. Right. So that's why. And then four days later, she dies of. Fucking seizure, right? It, it, right. So, so that's what it. It stinks of Seth Rich. Yeah. Right now, you know it personally, and that's why. That's why. Uh, you know, I, I want to ask you. I mean, you know, do, do you? She. What was her health? Let's start there. What was her health? Um, don't, don't. I don't want to hear stories and details where you are. I want to know about. Well, I think. Try to help me understand it. What What was her health like? A physical condition. Well, she the first thing she did in my hotel when she was introducing herself to me, she showed me an x-ray of her back. And there was three titanium uh, vertebra. Uh, and then she's the only triple titanium vertebra, supposedly. Uh, and Stanford is where she had the surgery. So she was in tremendous pain all the time. So that will be a backstory to this story. Um, I think that, in addition to her also being the president of the union and this great cop and she was the female super cop and all that and now she's was accused in 2003 of faking 
Uh, well, you know, I. Do you know where, where's the witness? Where's this? Where's there's this a case. Boy? There's a case. There's a 2003 case where they actually, the police chief who wanted to do a little uh, political move, wanted Jenny's support as the union cap, the union president. Um, basically said you're either with me or you're not with me and then they brought a case and the judge threw it out that's the part that gets left out but there's a 2003 case Moore versus State, City of Tracy uh, where they accuse her of you that. spent you spent a lot of time you lived in the same hotel with her for, for what eight months yeah eight months yeah now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw this out there when you put like you know you put two two cats in a, in a cage together for a while right Two cats in a cage, right? I did not have sex with that woman. And, and she didn't and, want to have sex with me either. And, <laughs> yeah. No, and I, 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 I shouldn't say that. Jenny's very pretty. But I, she thought she literally wanted to grab a garbage pail and throw up when people would mention <laughs> that. And that's only because she was showing courtesy toward the owner. She would have just thrown up on my no, shoes. No sexual relationship. No sexual relationship. She thought I was as, as uh, repulsive as, uh, you know, uh, high nen of whatever. Uh, it. She did not. Did she have a voice that she feared for her life? Oh, all the time. All the time. All the time. She certainly did. And uh, I mean, we were right over there, right over there with Kamala Harris. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I remember her shaking. She, because uh, she, she told Kamala Harris some sensitive information and yeah, then about Bill Clinton. Well, yeah. And she said, I have information about what's happening in California, drug running in California. And that's, and she knew Kamala Harris had the fake uh, Masonic cops and all that. Um, which is scarier because we had been visited at our so, hotel. So, so, so let's just, just okay. there is this clear motive on the record for yeah. why someone would want to kill Jenny Moore. Yes. Right? This clear motive, right? That's this motive that she was prepared to expose an ex-president of the United States of raping a young boy. Ooh. How, right? Well, let me finish. Yeah, yeah. Let me finish the thought. So, okay. so there's motive to kill her and what, what I want to ask you is details about the event very very light did you ever did you see the body did you see her no you didn't see the body no I, who saw the body the guy in the in the hotel that you had that little video the guy with the hands yeah. black hands yeah. black guy hands he saw and the body just call him Mr. A Mr. For right A now. saw the body yeah and Mr. A is about 25 year old guy he had never uh, gone into a hotel like he's a young guy but he's a very responsible guy uh, and his first initial is A, just so people can put a... Police report? They, did you see it? I haven't seen the police report yet. Um, I talked to... That certificate? See no, this? no, not yet. Um, there is a... I'm just trying to... Miss C, another person... Um, During that, the Seth Rich trial, I'm just playing devil's advocate. During the Seth Rich trial, you were... You led the charge in... in Going into the police station, demanding a police report. You demanded. Well, uh, you demanded the death certificate. We couldn't find anything with Seth Rich. So yeah, that, well, that's why my critical thinking takes me to. I mean, why is this any different? Why? Why are we? Because you're emotionally attached. That's no, where it leads. No. To Jenny, Jenny. Yeah, no, right? I, I know where you're going. Right? They, they, the reason is, is I knew the people. I mean, I've come to know Mr. A. Uh, and then let's say that Mr. G, I'm just using Mr. R, these are the three different people, men, right. at the front desk, and then um, and that, and Mr. H, okay, and then a Miss C, right, and they all uh, were there uh, during the two hours or so that Jenny was there. But my number one reason Now, now for, she, was, she was cremated as well, right? Yeah. And so I, and she has three plate, she has three titanium planks in her back, right? So. When they cremate it, we'll see those planks, right? We'll see it's titanium; it doesn't cremate. Correct. So Correct. the family's got the bars. Do you think? I don't know. Um, they, uh, does the family? You say the family doesn't want to talk about it. Do they want to not want to talk about it with you, or maybe it's? I, I mean, you're, I you're a nice guy, but you're you're involved. You're 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 present while while her daughter's doing all this dirty work. They'd rather her have been a a nurse or you know a fucking street sweeper, right? Well, the story with and, Jenny's. Right, uh, so. I think he has. A, she has a brother and a sister. The reason I got involved. So the titanium would be in the in the mix, right? We'd see that in the ashes, right? Because yeah. Okay, so we yeah. need to, we could look at that. Yeah, unless she gave me a different X-ray, but I doubt very seriously that those she didn't have. She had walked with a, a pronounced limp. Um, it, the longer she would walk, the more pain she would get into. Okay. Um, so. Because you didn't see the body. No. No, I didn't. But I talked. All, to all you these... saw was a bunch of cops that said, "Oh, it's a body," 
And then I, I guarantee that guy didn't see what he thought he saw. Well, did he see a body or did he see a sheet over a body? What did he see? Oh, he saw her. Um, he saw know, a stiff body? Yes. That's what he saw? Yeah. So, Interesting. So what happened was he went to the door. The door was, uh, key wasn't working. It was flashing red. He went back in and made another key for the room. He went in the room. So one person saw her dead? No, a whole bunch of people. A okay. forensic team came over. Right. To the detectives from PG County came over. So um, she had a, a sheet wrapped around one of her legs, but everything else on the bed was thrown like she had been in a, you know, a bad, a horrible bad dream, right? Or something, a seizure or something. But everything was off of her except that one sheet was wrapped around one of her legs. And she was not to one side, not to the other, but like straight on her back. How did they rule it? It was not a, a hit so quickly. How? Why did they conclude that? No signs of struggle. I think was the key thing. I mean, there was no outward signs of struggle. Um, I think. I mean, they, you would. I would you agree in, with the summation that I've been I've been thinking about, which is, you know, so you could weaponize a microwave oven and and zap somebody. There's other YouTube channels that'll show you that clearly. There's, there's also. <laughs> <Not mine. laughs> there's also. I mean, I I have you know a medical background to some degree and I could tell you that you can create substances that would mask body chemistry and kill you the art of killing people is not it's what the CIA does right I mean there is a nanoparticle and there is a so Lawrence, what are we looking for That's Lawrence Livermore guy who actually you got that any of that in your pocket George? no no don't show my gut yeah I'm sorry <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. well that's fine no I don't have it I gotta pat him down yeah See, yeah the, she's uh, got the stuff there on. is a Lawrence Livermore guy that brags about um, using a nanoparticle to induce yeah. a seizure. And the last person she talked to, and the person that she felt she got a death threat from, was called Clotworthy. It's kind of a funny name. I mean, it's not like, like, you know, if we have to get rid of somebody, that's another way of saying yeah. somebody's Clotworthy. But, but before, before we do that, we need to find out, we need to know, is, it, is, is, there, is there a body? Is there really a dead person, first? And then second, is it a murder? Or is it, it just the, the natural cause thing? You, you know, also with a weaponized um, kind of, uh, you know, x-ray thing. If you shoot it at somebody with, a, with, with titanium rods in their back, that would act as a lightning rod. Something to think about. Well, we used to go through the court at 333 Constitution constantly. And um, she would go off if you, you know what I mean? I mean, she yeah. would... You know, beep, 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 and then she would explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they would go, rit, 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 you know. Now, titanium. How's the comments? They call me fucking horse teeth and. and, and no, well, <laughs> you, you know what? Good. Hey, you That's know good. what? Let's do that. Half of the guys on here. I gave him, are, I gave, I'm giving his uh, camera the finger. Here. Yeah, and, but they're not my people. And by the way, uh, moderator. Uh -huh. Anybody who says anything like that, bang. No, French. it's that's fine. I don't care. What do no, no, I don't. That's why you're here. Trying to get you mad so that you. You get, can't do it. Yeah, it's yeah. not. That's. Do I look like? Do I look like you guys? But it's not my do I look scared? We're not. We're not. Our channel. It's is, hard. See, this, this is the thing about this sort of thing. For, for me to talk into the camera and give my opinion is easy, and for you to do it, it's because you're in a comfort zone by yourself, and there's no, there's no critic. But when you, when you, when, when you, when when someone's asking you questions, or you're being asked questions, you know, you're, you're asking the question, even asking questions is hard. Like I'm, I'm more used to talking than asking questions. Yeah. But, uh, all right, so, so. Well, so this Miss yeah, C, ahead. who I see every morning, and she's the one who said she, Jenny had a roller. So Miss C is the one who said Jenny had a roller leaving the hotel on Thursday or Friday morning. Wow. Okay. Now, she's the one who says, you know, she saw the body as well, as well as Mr. A, as well as all the other folks there who were there at that time at about 3.45 in the afternoon. They were there two or three hours. So it, it spanned a couple of different shifts. The reason why I didn't go back, and I want to answer that, is because Jenny had these hard drives or and or thumb drives given out to different people as kind of a dead woman switch. And she told me about this a lot, and I was not one of those people. Well, that goes back to motive for why someone want to knock her out, right? She definitely was afraid of. But her what about? Every, okay, I want to ask. Day. I want to ask you one, one more question. About not afraid, but. And you could. I, I would respect you telling me. You know, I'm not going to answer that, but. You you have a girlfriend, right? And and you had a falling out with the girlfriend online or something. Or her name is Deep NSA. Could, you know, jealous, jealousy, right? That because I don't see a motive for you. Unless someone's handing you a million dollars, what's the motive? 
It does. That doesn't make sense. Why? So you get more hits on your fucking YouTube channel? Yeah. Anybody who thinks that is stupid. That's yeah. not. That's ridiculous. Well. Uh, that's so, ridiculous. So deep NSA uh, matter on May 10th. We're ruling out. We're ruling George out here. That's this is what called. This is what's called ruling out a witness. Yeah. And that this is fine. I, I like this process because it's going to hopefully. Jenny had said, if I get taken out, don't stop. Keep researching. Same yeah. way with me. If I get the Kennedy headshot, keep going, right? So I met, uh, I first met Deep NSA, or I'd never met her, but she was at the place where I thought the NSA contractors were doing deep dives on Trump last May. Okay. So she actually went to the place. Defango called me. Somehow Defango knew I was there that night at 3 in the morning and called me. That's why I always thought Defango was, you know, I don't have any opinion of that guy. I saw some of it. I don't. Yeah. Know. Well, anyway, I just. How did I, he know? I'll say Jason Goodman has been very, uh, to me, very generous with his time. He helped me uh, early on exposing stuff in, uh, in a, you know, in a corruption thing in, in New York, right? And oh, was that the garbage thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was, yeah. A, I was a sanitation cop, and I, I um, exposed the ticket quota, and. It, oh yeah, it was, I remember that. It was very much. Episode. It was very much the story of of um, where. You're on the wrong side of the the, uh, the court. You're sitting in the wrong chair, and everything you say is wrong, and everything they say is right. And Jason was there. Jason was fucking standing out in the, you know, outside of the court that day in the freezing cold with me, and we talked about it. And so Jason, but Defango, I, I I have, I, I just I see those guys, you know, kind of an opportunist. But but the well, uh, so first of all, let me say on on. So when this, just just answer me the question okay. about I want to know about the girl. I want to know. I, I did not know her until May 10th. May 10th. She had been communicating. And what does she do? What vaguely does she do for a living? When, uh, she live in the area. What does she uh, do for Port, a living? Fort Meade. Fort Meade, and she places. I, I don't want to say places people into NSA. Any criminal record? Uh, I don't. Does I, she work for the government? No. I don't think she's ever worked for the government, but the reason why uh, she's very helpful right now is because we're trying to get to who are the NSA contractors who did the deep dive on Trump. There's 90 of them. We know there's 90 yeah. from the court. Well, that's, that's good investigative so, stuff, but so, I'm, I'm, I'm but more concerned about how it connects to they had is a, their motive for her to... They had an argument over a chair. They had a, not oh, an argument over okay. a chair. It was a rocking chair that, that uh, oh. she always sat in. I told Deep NSA, you know, she didn't want to meet anybody. I told her she was coming down to the hotel. Mm -hmm. I don't want to meet anybody. We were waiting until NSA, uh, uh, task force went inside. Yeah. She ended up waiting on the car. That's as close. It was all over a rocking chair, right? It was. I mean, that's just the. You're right. going to see other things. Are other. You convinced? How's the audience? Are they convinced? They're I don't know. There. I mean, no, that, really? that's the truth. I mean, until the, the thing I want. Come on, say something. Check yeah. Oh, they love you. Oh, cool. You're, right, immediately, so, you're immediately loved. So, so, so here's the here's the I, final question. Let's it, get away from this. This okay? So, you, I, I feel comfortable that I've asked you and you've answered. Now, let's talk about the bigger picture. Right? Okay. The big, the bigger picture. We're, we're, we're. People are saying, okay, Alex Jones, for example, is getting crushed. And I don't want to make it sound like inside pool, like, oh, just the content. This is, you know, is this a content content provider discussion about uh, censorship? But on a larger picture, censorship on the internet, when they chop, you know, Alex Jones' legs out from under him, whether you like him or not, that affects everybody. Demonetizing people who kind of depend on that income, it, 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 it helps. So on the other hand, and I, I, I would like to see if you agree with this assessment, is that do you think that we're in a heyday, a kind of a golden age, golden age of new media where two guys sitting on a bench who didn't know each other before, so one of them decided to film so he didn't, the guy's not gonna edit out the shit, right? Because you couldn't do that on CNN. If you tried to walk into CNN with a second camera, they would say, put that shit away, or you're not gonna, we're not gonna interview you. But this is, we're, we're keeping each other honest, and I respect that. I'm not out for rating. So I, I, wanna, I wanna think, I want you to, I, I know you're, you're a detailed guy, but big picture, I'm a big picture guy. Do you think that we're at a, 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 a tipping point in terms of New media, or is is the is the corporate entity, the oligarchy, the monopoly, so powerful and so so doesn't give a shit about your opinion, ready to stop it and crush it, and will continue to crush it to, to the bitter end. 
Well, um, there was a guy who came out, uh, this photographer, famous photographer, Peter Duke, came out to DC uh, and was, was shooting some pictures. And he said the problem, and he's very connected to um, Steve Bannon's PR guy. Um, right. And we met with the, that guy. And he said, they have no answer for this. They have no answer for this. This is immediate, it's live. Uh, it goes out can't stop. and you can't stop it. Now, they, will they start now having secret blacklists or public blacklists and that sort of thing? Uh, with InfoWars, I mean, I don't know how many YouTube journalists have three satellites, you know? They have three satellites. So anytime I see somebody with satellites, I don't necessarily put them in the same bucket that I'm in, uh, especially when you got, you know, satellite guys in the Trump Tower dying, you know? So, um, but there was just a, there was just a, uh, a someone commented that Alex Jones, they're having a hard time driving people to their site, which I predicted two weeks ago. Everybody said, oh, he's going to be, he's going to be bigger. They made him bigger. But really, when they cut him off YouTube, it kind of, it silenced him. He'll be back. He'll be back. I, I think they wanted to, I mean, I'm not saying it's contrived, but a lot of people are picking up their app now. So when you pick up the app, you, they, you get everything, you know. But but the but the, the the last the last report I I can't tell you where I heard it but one of the, one of the YouTube <laughs> said that that he's having a hard time statistically having a hard time driving people and he claims to have ten million dollars in the bank Mr Jones I don't believe it well but, that's a big operation um, and it's uh, sell vitamins uh, right? sell vitamins. yeah yeah but the, the satellites is the thing that's the access you know yeah. and then this multicasting where you can go to a internet or um, you know, to a TV feed, etc. Right. It's very powerful. It's huge reach. So I, I don't, I don't look at myself in the same bucket as Alex Jones. He's, he's the other. He's corporate media to me. Mm. Uh, what about Young Turks? Same. Yeah, Chenk is or Sink or whatever his name is. Yeah, yeah. he's very much so. Yeah, I don't. They, it's almost like you know they had the little fight you know at the Democratic convention yeah. with Roger Stone. It's like this is worse than like Bernie well, Sanders versus Donald Trump, 2020. Who wins? Trump probably wins that. Mm. The reason I would say is Trump. What if the Democrats back him, back Bernie? I mean, full throat, not the half-ass thing, you know, but full throat. We believe in Bernie. What do you think? Um, Can they it them? may be a contest. I think Hillary's going to run the, with again. With the cheating, with the element of cheating that the Democrats control so many boxes, they control California, they control New York. Yeah, I mean, the reason why the Democrats, uh, the DNC, I'll say, not the Democrats. The reason why the DNC likes. Um, you know, uh, Hillary is money. It's, of it's profitable. Yeah. You know, and people and Bernie, hate her. The corporations love her. Bernie, it, I mean, they see their bank account dwindling. <laughs> yeah. You know, that da, 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 going down, down, he was, down. He scared the shit out of him. He yeah. said, "We're gonna break up the banks. I'm their worst enemy." Yeah, yeah. he meant it. Yeah, he, see, I that's the so. thing. That's the thing about it. He meant it, and uh, you know, whether they threatened him and he started becoming a, you know, ru there's bugs all over the place. Russian, uh, he's, he's, you know, he became a Russia, 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 Russia guy. Well, even if he is out that extreme, here's why I like Bernie, because he's in the same way the wrecking ball that Trump is. He, right, he'd he come is. in and go, hey, wait a minute, why are we signing, but Bernie, why are Bernie, we sending weapons to ISIS, you know, and why did that yeah, pass Yeah, but, but that's, 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 that's corruption in the military, but the, this, I believe, is a, is a financial problem, and I don't think Trump has or ever had, he, he doesn't have an economic solution. He believes in trickle-down trickle down economics, where the money is going to rain down from corporations. And Bernie says, no, they're, they're stealing the money. They're stealing it in the form of tax evasion, right, right? tax, you know, aversion. Bert Sanders, whether it's Sanders in that chair or someone with an economic solution to an economic problem, could win, right? Trump doesn't have that. Trump is, gave him tax breaks. That, I, in my view, you know... Trump is, is running on the idea of trickle-down economics, Alan Greenspan failed policy of that corporations, and, and, and I, I, you probably know it, that Greenspan said on his way out that we grossly underestimated the willingness of corporations to reciprocate. That we thought that they would, and they didn't. They took the money and they ran mm -hmm. and keep running. Look at Holly Davidson. They took... They, they got they got their big tax break. What did they do? Instead of trickled down, they took they took they took the money and they trickled it into Thailand. Well, I'm not much for politics. I'm more for political spying. But I will say that Nuchin and uh, Wilbur Ross, when they started using the power of the Treasury, the OFAC, the o o uh, Overseas Foreign Investment 
ability to grab assets. Yeah. And they went and got Darpaska's assets for spying, and they went and got Gertler for illegal mining in Congo, and they started doing this uh, Vexelberg for stealing secrets that were being pumped out of here to uh, Think right. Tank. And that's when they went, oh boy, I get the word on the street. The word on the street is you bring the, you repatriate the money and they won't seize it. Mm. The reason why I think Trump is having kind of, he's on a roll with low unemployment is everybody's repatriating the money because they don't want it to get seized. I mean, it's just flat out economics, right? Uh, I, I don't want my money seized by, you know. But they don't really have an incentive. That's actually a lie. They don't have an incentive to bring it back ashore. What are they going to do with it? They're billionaires. They don't have any plan to reciprocate. They don't have any, Well, I mean, you know, like I the Rockefellers, they build libraries. The, the Carnegies, they build, you know, towers for the poor, right? The, the, the corporations have none of that in their, in their, well, I, none of that in the corporate. The corporate. I, I think the Foxconn example where we we're talking about, you're talking about, um, Milwaukee, um, and they hundred billion dollars, you know, coming in. That's a big shift. Even if the money just sits in a bank, you, you got to invest it somewhere. That's going to be right. uh, that's better than it's in Bitcoin in Malaysia. But it doesn't yeah. hit a real economy. It sits in a bank and it makes fictitious numbers. Well, when you, velocity of money, if that money were to hit the American economy, right? In in terms of someone who makes less than a thousand, makes less than a hundred thousand dollars a year. They spend that money. When people have billions of dollars, they don't spend it. They yeah. they hoard it and they 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 look at it numbers in a in a in a in, a, in an account. And while one in seven saying, people are on, I food think the stamps. low unemployment is a factor. The number one reason I would say that unemployment. Is, I dispute those numbers, but I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it is if because you could of show, repatriated money, but that's just my opinion. Right. Yeah. And I'm not much for politics, actually. I'm more like. Uh, you know, but what corruption. you do is connected to it. So, so, yeah. so shameless self-promotion. Who would you rather have as your sen senator in New York, Kristen Gillibrand or Mark Sconti? I mean, just and I'm not. I'm not saying it for my own sake. Are I'm you saying, running? yeah, I'm running. I'm running for senate. As oh, a, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. As a senate, that's why I'm here. I'll tell you more about that as the day goes. Well, on. that's big news. Uh, no, it's not news. I've been plugging it like crazy. I'm. Oh I'm, I'm a write-in candidate for the United States Senate in New York. I gotta and, call um, my stringers. This right. is awesome. And if 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 we if we get stopped with Gillibrand, which it's only this you know November sixth. I'd love to see the debate as this. You two. Oh, I tear I tear. Yeah, her, that was. I, I'm, I'm excited about watching that. Yeah. So you know, again, the the momentum to overcome the degree of cheating as a writing candidate. I think only Strom Thurmond was able to ever uh, become a senator as a writing. But that's. Neither here nor there. If if we fail with Chris and Gillibrand, I'm going to run after Schumer, and uh, as it goes. But uh, you're but going to have to take a couple boat rides out to Block Island in order <laughs> to uh, get the nomination. I hear. Yeah. Uh, that's where they explained to John John how they were not going to let him mm. run for Senate. Uh, right. So we'll cross I don't want bridge. any part of those guys. Yeah. People say, "Oh, you're going to be on the ballot." No, they that's that's pay for play. To become to put on a ballot in New York, it's like I don't know, eight thousand mm. dollars, and then good luck. The Democrats will stick a knife. Forget about it. It's cheating. Why would you want to? You don't want to be part of the cheating. You want to run outside of the box. And if people could, if you could get a tsunami of, I, I don't know. I, I mean, call me a dreamer, but you get a tsunami of people that get it as people wake up, and you position yourself. You the same same person, same greasy hair, same baseball hat. Go into that office across the street and flip over the tables, the camera. And, you want to hold a camera? I'll hold a camera. But we're going to hold cameras so we find out the truth of what's going on and stop this bullshit, right? Stop all this shit, careerists. Well, Task careerists Force, in office. or Jenny Moore, was exactly that person. She was the one who went in there and, and didn't flip over, but, I mean, she was in, like, Omar Awan's office, like, 20 times, saying, where is this guy? He's, yeah. he's the number two guy. He's also head of human resources. He's into the PeopleSoft system. He's changing people's records. He's changing people's name, saying that Sally Brown, who left three years ago, now just changed her name to Shaniqua Daquan, and she's now she just bought a, a five hundred thousand dollar house with a Congressional Fed Credit Union. Oh, wait a minute, Sally doesn't work here anymore. The flow or, of money it flows the, sideways, the quasi, up and down. Quasi Mensa and all these other things. So I'm I'm Jenny did that, and yes. um, I was not as after I try something and it doesn't work, I kind of go away from yeah. it. And, and it really didn't work. I mean, it, it, she had real trouble. Um, like Those are bad people. 
Yeah, I mean, it just they Those don't. Are bad people. They people have, don't, you know, Goldman Sachs, they have interns. People that, don't realize the who's who's running the running the board. They have know. interns making zero dollars yeah. in there, yeah. and they're supposed to smile and give you water, yeah. and then you're supposed to leave, and no yeah. one listens to anybody who comes up here on Capitol Hill unless it's over the Capitol Grill. Mm. And that's where the deals are made in, mm. in D.C. But that's just my All right, George, we're at 50 minutes, so let's okay. uh, let's wrap this up. It's a good talk, right? Yeah, it's it was good. good. I think it's very informative, right? Yeah, yeah I think uh, one last Mark. thing about oh, yeah. Jenny. Um, uh, I want to say that she uh, she <laughs> yeah. had a um, – she was t texting, and her last – she texted and, and retweeted every day. She retweeted and, and tweeted. Right. And so the last one is midnight on Friday, and it's one of these – where you know sometimes you fall asleep and it has a bunch of characters. Okay. It's 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 you know what I'm talking <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, you fall asleep on the button. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and the C and then the next letter over, which is C with the little cedilla, you know, the French garçon, that kind of C. This is her last message. Yeah, and then one more over. Oh, that co that cover that word. Yeah, that little hook on the end of the C, that cedilla, and then. Uh, That's uh, some mysterious shit right there. And then and then V, which is kind of straight across. So she kind of like. Was that when she had the thing Friday? Mm. Um, and I uh, now I don't know when she got back to the hotel. The uh, what I Miss C that I referenced earlier said that the police have been coming back every day. The police have been coming back every day since she died, and that was almost 14 days ago. Right. So and they've not talked to me yet. Right. So I don't know if that's good or bad. But I'm. Uh, well, on that note, rolling. I feel like I I feel like I I asked those questions. You answered. Right. Yeah. So so um. So that's it for today. We'll maybe pop in later on. Thank you. George. How long are you going to be in D.C.? We should do it oh, again. Oh, everything's a sequel to me. I don't talk Oh, about okay, okay. My, my well, call me again if you want to do another I, one. I will. I know yeah. how to get in touch with you. Yeah. Well, let that away. I pass the video. You, you pass the video. You're done. done. So who's the, who's, the, who's the Wizard of Oz here? Who's the, who's the wizard and who's Oz? Brennan. Like Brennan is the Wizard of Oz. Okay. He's the one who making all this noise and Steve Brennan. Brennan? No. Oh, Brennan. Uh, John the, Brennan. Oh, uh, yeah, that guy. He's, yeah. The, he's uh, the guy who said, he said in, in, in open court, we don't do evidence. Remember when he said that? Right, right. We don't no, do evidence. We spy. We don't. We don't do evidence. Evidence? We, no, we don't do evidence. And I am. Toto. He said that. He said that to uh, to Trey Gowdy. Trey Gowdy said, "Well, evidence. There's a clip. You can watch the clip." Uh, is that the May 23rd where they started the whole? Trey Gowdy grilled him, and he said, right to his face, "We don't do evidence. What kind of what kind of country do we live in? We don't do evidence." I, I would that's say that's who he's talking about. In Brandon. the Wizard of Oz analogy, well, first of all, all we have to do to win. For, for good is to follow the Yellow Cake Road, follow it right to Oleg Deripaska's oh. centrifuges in Iran. Right. But, 530 people in Senate and Congress. That's all we got to do. Right. That's not a lot of people. So follow the Yellow Cake Road. The other thing uh, was Get rid of them. you, I think, um, uh, what, who do you think you are? Who if, I if think Bre I am? Brennan, if I'm Toto and I'm oh. pulling back the curtain on Brennan and Brennan is the Wizard of Oz. Mm. I don't, I don't know. That's a good question. I got to think about that one, George. <laughs> Who am I in the Wizard of Oz? I, I don't know, man. I'm not. I'm just. I'm just a guy that. that I, you I, you I find put out stuff, a video I with find this stuff the Scarecrow and uh, right. the Wicked Witch. Oh, fire Scarecrow! How about so, a little fire? So you don't think I'm the Wicked Witch, witch anymore, right? And no. You, you might think I'm the Scarecrow. I think I at, at some. I think at some point you're the Wizard of Oz. I you, think. You still some, believe that? After meeting me. No, not, not, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it, I got I to gotta think about it. It's 90 degrees. Yeah. I can't put on a spot. I got yeah. go, a little hot, hot flash. All right, so Did let's, I breathe on you too? No, hard. no, okay. you do good. Okay. Right, so let's wrap this up. Thank you very much, George. I think I already shook your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, George, George sweaty Webb. Palm. I got a sweat. I got a sweaty palm. You, you made me sweat. Palms, no, I, I'm sweating all over the place. Yeah. So my hair is real, right? It's confirmed. Yeah, so it's beautiful that, hair. Some polar hair. Gorgeous. It's all right, man. So uh, I'll be right back. We'll talk. I just want to. I just want to wrap, wrap this up. up. Okay. Right? So, well, ah, holy smokes, George Webb. George Webb. That's a good guy. There he is. He's broadcasting while I'm broadcasting. So uh, I'm all I'm I'm all talked out right now. So uh, enjoy that and uh, let me know what you think. Put your comments down below. Mark Sconti, opinionist, reporter, candidate for United States Senate. Peace.